Hey guys, I've got something really cool to show you. Check this out. So I've got this little demo project here where I can create a player and then I can create a new game. And then on another window, I can create another player and hop into that same game. And we basically have multiplayer tic-tac-toe here, right? It's, it's cool, but it's not the super cool thing I want to show you. To, to show you that, let's just hop into Cursor now. And you know already that Cursor Agent can see all your code in your project, but did you know now that Cursor can see all the data in your database too? This means you can ask it questions and it can reason about all your data right from within Cursor. I think this is just so cool. I can just think of so many uses for this. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. I should probably explain what we're doing here. So you may have heard of this cool new thing called the Model Context Protocol, or MCP for short, which support for has just landed in Cursor and Windsurf. It's a new protocol slash standard from Anthropic that effectively allows you to add plugins to your agent. And um, they describe it as a USB-C port for AI applications, which sounds like a pretty good description to me. So how do you use it? Well, first you need to make sure that your cursor is up to date. Um, the version, the minimum version is 0.46.8 or later. And you probably should have this already, but um, you can double check by going into your cursor about cursor to uh, verify that. Now you want to open up the cursor settings and go to the MCP tab on the left hand side and click add new MCP server. You'll want to set the type as command and give it a name of some sort. Um, but then also you want to enter this CLI command. And the cursor implementation for this on Windows is a bit beta right now. Um, so you're going to want to prefix that command with a CMD slash C like this. And when you run this on Windows, it's going to open up a terminal window that you can't close. Otherwise, it stops the MCP server. It's kind of annoying, to be honest, but hopefully the cursor team can fix this soon. Anyways, if everything went OK, you should now see a little green dot and, and a list of tools that the Convex MCP server has. And now the AI agent has got access to a bunch of Convex abilities. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at what was going on before when I asked it to give me all the games that had been won by Mike. So we can see that it immediately knew what I was talking about and it knew that it was going to have to go look into the database to answer my question rather than trying to find the answer in the code, which I think is, is pretty cool. And it first used the status tool to give it a list of all the deployments in the project. It then identified that we're working with a development deployment and then it used that to get the list of the tables and the schema of those tables from the project. Oh, I should just mention here that I have the YOLO setting turned on in Cursor, which means it's able to execute these MCP tools without first asking me for confirmation. Anyway, so now it knows about the tables in the repo, it's able to do what I think is the coolest part. It's able to write a one-off convex query and immediately execute it. This is cool. I, I didn't even know we even had the ability to do this in convex. Um, I guess this like one-off query is kind of like an SQL query string, except it's written in JavaScript. So now it has all the data and everything it needs to be able to answer the question and show me the games that have been won by Mike. And the cool thing is that because this is an AI agent, we can then ask follow-up questions without having to repeat ourselves. So what else can we do with this MCP server? Um, let's take a look at some of the other tools we have here. So we've already seen the status tables and the run one-off query tool, um, but let's take a look at this data one. If we hover our mouse over it, we can see that it's going to read a page of data from the table. Uh, that sounds cool, let's, let's give that a crack. Please show me all of the games in the database. Okay, so it's gonna check the status again, then grab all the tables before it finally uses the data tool. And bam, there we go. It's listed all the games and it's even sorted them nicely for us. Lovely. So I've now shown what NCP is and how to use it. And hopefully you can see why you might want to use it. Well, the convex one at least. Um, I now want to touch on a couple of other points. So you remember before when we added the MCP server to Cursor, we had an option to choose the type, whether it was command or SSE. So you see the command type runs the command locally on your computer and uses standard input-output communication. And this is what we're using in the Convex MCP. Whereas SSE on the other hand, allows the MCP server to run remotely and stream the data back to the Cursor over HTTP. 
So I would say like the SSE is useful for like cloud hosted MCP servers that you want to be able to access from anywhere and don't want to have to run them locally on your computer. Another part of the MCP cursor story I should tell you about is the difference between global and project servers. You see, when we added that server to Curse before, it was added as a global server. That means all the comics abilities that we added are going to be available to every project you work with. And this is great because every project you work with is convex, right? Right? Well, just in case that's not the case, you can also choose to enable MCP for just one project. And you do this by adding a file called mcp.json in your .cursor directory. And inside that file, you could put some code that looks like this. Then if we open up the cursor settings again, you'll see that we now have this little label project managed next to our convex server. For it to work, we have to enable it, um, but we only have to do this once. So if we restart cursor again, it will automatically be enabled for us. And because this is just a file that lives inside your project, you can commit this to Git and have it shared with the rest of your teammates. So there is one slight wrinkle though. As I mentioned before, on Windows, you have to prefix the command, um, the mpx command with cmd slash c. So if we were to do this inside the mcp.json file, and then we commit that into Git, it's gonna mean that users using Mac and versus Windows are gonna have different commands and it's gonna not work for everybody. So until Curse is able to fix this issue, we recommend just using the convex MCP server globally for now. So what other MCP servers are there in Cursor? Well, the answer is a whole lot. Even though the model context protocol is fairly new standard here, there are already a ton of different servers you can install. This repo here is a really great resource that lists a whole bunch of them. I won't go into any of these in depth in this video, but um, there's some really interesting ones like the GitHub one that lets you search for issues and PRs. Um, and then there's this sequential thinking one that um, supposedly supercharges the agent's reasoning abilities inside Cursor. So that just about does it for today. Um, you know, when I first heard about NCP, I wasn't quite sure what the purpose of it was. I thought like, why do we need to add this whole extra layer of plugin architecture on top of the agent when it already has the ability to make web calls and use the terminal. So in theory, it should just be able to do anything that these tools can do anyway. But now I understand what it's doing is it's providing a really clean interface to the AI. So it knows explicitly what the tools and the resources are it can use. And it also provides a standardized way of doing this between different IDEs and apps. There's still a lot more that can be done with MCP. Um, from a convex perspective, I personally would love to be able to execute one-off mutations in addition to queries. So I can totally see use cases where I might want to have the AI populate a database with uh, a bunch of dummy data so I can test out a particular scenario. Another use case might be having a mutation that can clear the entire database for me. Um, thinking about it, though, obviously we would probably have to be careful here. We want to make sure that it doesn't run on your production database and is like limited to, to development deployments. <laughs> There's also, I think, a lot more that Cursor could do with MCP. Um, for example, I didn't talk about it in this video, but MCP spec has a bunch of other parts to it, such as resources and streams and notifications. For example, I could imagine um, setting up a stream of data from the database that would come back into the agent and notify it whenever some record changes. This means that maybe perhaps in the future, an agent can proactively take actions on behalf of you, or at the very least be armed with some extra context before executing your prompt. For now, these MCP features aren't available in Cursor, but I hope they add them soon and fix that Windows issue. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.